This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Hello and welcome to Into the Multiverse. I am your host, Josh Peck. Did you know you have magnetic particles in your brain? And the reason why is still a bit of a mystery. We're going to talk about that today. But first, if you have not had a chance to do so, make sure you subscribe. And you have to click the bell to let YouTube know that you always want to be notified when a new episode of Into the Multiverse is uploaded. And in case it doesn't notify you, because that's been happening to uh, many into the Multiverse subscribers, then just know that every Thursday at 9 a.m. you will get a brand new episode of Into the Multiverse. I am also hoping by next week uh, I will be back in the studio and recording from the beautiful Skywatch TV studio. So ho hopefully that will happen next week. Now, in a remote forest laboratory in Germany, free from widespread pollution found in cities, scientists are studying slices of human brains. Uh, the lab's isolated location, which is uh, 50 miles from Munich, gives the researchers the opportunity to examine a bizarre quirk of the brain, the presence of magnetic particles deep within the organ's tissues. Why are they there? Uh, scientists have known since the 90s, since the 1990s, that the human brain contains these particles, but researchers didn't know why. Some experts have uh, proposed that these particles served some type of biological purpose, while other researchers suggested that the magnets come from uh, environmental pollution. But... All that is changing. Now the German scientists have evidence for the former explanation in a, in a new small study that included da uh, data on seven post-mortem brains. Researchers found that some parts of the brains were more magnetic than others. Uh, they, these areas contained more magnetic particles. Uh, what's more, all seven brains in the study have very similar distributions of magnetic particles throughout, suggesting that the particles are not a result of environmental absorption, but rather serve some biological function. The team uh, wrote this in the study, published uh, July 27th in the journal Scientific Reports. So you can check that out. The researchers looked at slices of brain from seven people who had died in the early 1990s at ages 54 to 87. Uh, in the remote forest lab, far from uh, widespread sources of magnetic pollution, including car exhaust and cigarette ashes, stuff like that, uh, and, and shielded by leaves known to absorb mag magnetic particles, the scientists place their slices under a uh, device that measures magnetic forces. Now, after taking a control reading, the researchers place the brain slices next to very strong magnets to magnetize the samples and then uh, took another reading. If the slice contained magnetic particles, those particles would then show up as a reading in the magnetometer. But you don't have to worry about your brain particles magnetizing in day-to-day -day life, though. A, a kind of magnet, uh, the, ki the kind of magnet that's used in the experiment is way stronger than anything we would come across in nature. Uh, and this was confirmed by lead author Stuart Gilder, a professor of geophysics at the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich. Uh, the magnetic in the study was one Tesla strong, or 20,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field, which is about uh, 50 microteslas strong. So the scientists found that most parts of the brain could be magnetized. In other words, these areas all contained magnetic particles. Uh, but in all seven brains, the brainstem and, and the cerebellum had greater magnetism than the higher up uh, cerebral cortex. Both the brainstem and the cerebellum are in the lower back portions of the brain, and both are more, uh, uh, scientists claim that they're more evolutionary ancient than the cerebral cortex, but of course, uh, you know, we might interpret that differently. But, but, uh, Getting back to the magnetism, it's still unclear why the particles appear in this pattern of concentrations, the, sci the scientists have said. But because the researchers spotted the pattern in all of the brains examined, uh, Gilder is quoted as saying it probably has or had some kind of biological significance. So, for example, because these particles were more concentrated lower down in the brain and then tapered off higher up, they likely play a role in helping electrical uh, signals travel from the spine up uh, and into the brain. Uh, and Gilder told that to Live Science. However, he stressed that the findings uh, remain fully open to interpretation. 
Now, furthermore, because the particles weren't found specifically at higher concentrations near the olfactory bulb, which is what would happen if the particles were absorbed from the environment, uh, Gilder said he doesn't think the particles are a result of, uh, of exposure to pollution. Um, so here the idea is that the particles would be inhaled through the nose and then pass into the brain's olfactory bulb. Uh, Joseph Kirschwink, a professor of geobiology at Caltech, was not part of the study, uh, who was not part of the study, said that the new research is, quote, a very important advance as it rules out obvious sources of external contamination, end quote, from pollution. Uh, contamination is always possible, but would not be the same in multiple in individuals, uh, he told Live Science in an email. The researchers hypothesized that the type of magnetic particles found in these brain regions is a compound called magnetite uh, Fe304, based on previous studies that found this particle in human brains. It's possible, however, that other kinds of magnetic particles exist in the brain besides magnetite, Gilder noted. Uh, many animals also have magnetic particles in their brains. Some uh, past research have, has suggested that animals such as eels or sea turtles use these particles to help navigate, but Gilder said that only one group of creatures are definitely known to use particles of magnetite for orienting themselves in space, and that's uh, magnet magnetotatic <laughs> uh, bacteria. These bacteria migrate along magnetic field the, the along the magnetic field lines of the Earth's magnetic field. So humans, on the other hand, probably don't do that, uh, Gilder said. So what do you think? I'm curious to know what you think. Why, why do we have these magnetic particles in our brain? Does it have anything to do with uh, navigation? Or do you, do you think that it still could be some type of contamination? Um, what, what are your thoughts? I would love to know. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. And again, if you haven't had a chance to do so, make sure you subscribe and click the bell. And uh, if YouTube still doesn't notify you, even though you're begging and pleading for it to, uh, just know that every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. you will get a new Into the Multiverse. Uh, all right, well, that was a lot of fun, and thank you for joining me. Until next time, hopefully in the studio, uh, take care and God bless. From the Garden of Eden to our current day, dark Luciferian entities have worked to destroy mankind, while biblical prophecy points to a soon coming war between earthly governments and a clash of colossal proportions. Dr. Thomas Horn says you cannot understand much of the Bible unless you read and grasp the revelations in the Gods of War Super Collection. For your $35 donation during this very limited time offer, you'll receive The Alliance of Evil, the ground breaking new book by Pentagon analyst Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, which unveils the prophetic new dual Cold War between the U.S., Russia, and China unfolding across the global spectrum now. The Gods of Ground Zero that explains the supernatural forces operating behind current global events. And The Last Clash of the Titans, which analyzes the most overlooked prophecies in the Bible and explains how Jesus Christ himself will soon go to war against the gods of antiquity. But with this three-volume critical collection, you'll also receive completely free of charge the brand new, never-before-released, full-length DVD, War of the Gods, Volume 1, Search for the Titans. Walk one-on-one -on -one with your personal guides Derek and Sharon Gilbert through a tour of the Holy Land, including Shiloh, Bethel, and Mount Hermon. You will see where the final battle between God and the rebel angels will take place. And you'll explore for yourself Sardinia's megalithic tombs of the giants, their connection to the ancient Canaanites, and the final battle. And that's not all. You'll also receive for a very limited time the best of the first annual Blessed Hope Prophecy Conference on DVD. This two-disc DVD collection is jam-packed with over 11 hours of mind-boggling revelations from presenters like Dr. Thomas R. Horn on Deep State Saboteurs and The Secret Destiny of America, Sharon Gilbert on the return of the ancients through pharmakia, necromancy, and virtual reality, Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis on the inside war against President Trump by elite secret societies. And unforgettable presentations from celebrated theologian Dr. Michael Lake, Derek P. Gilbert, Josh Peck, and more. 
But we're still not done. Skywatch TV's Off the Record series is back by popular demand with a brand new, never before aired DVD, The Gods of War Edition, featuring exclusive interviews with Detective Carl Gallops, Senior Pentagon Analyst Robert McGinnis, Derek and Sharon Gilbert on the coming hyper battle between the forces of God and the titans of biblical prophecy. This content is only available in this exclusive offer and will not be aired anywhere else. Included for a limited time with the Gods of War Super Collection. This unprecedented collection sold separately holds a retail value of $220. All six items yours now for your donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling. This without a doubt is the largest special offer of the summer and is available only while supplies last. So don't delay. The Gods of War Super Collection. Available now at skywatchtvstore.com. Order online or call 1-844-750-4985.